So here on Vintage SF, I try to read as many older novels as I can. Right now, many of you know I'm going through the Ace Science Fiction Specials Series 1. These were published primarily between 1967 to 1971. That doesn't mean that they are all first publication. Some of them are reprints. If you've watched this channel, you also know I use a rating system. I'll just put it up over here. Reread is at the top. That means this book is something that I'd like to reread in the future. To me, that's the highest regard I can give to a book, is that I'd like to read it again. Then there's good books, okay books, and then books I maybe wish I never really had picked up. Books that I'll never get back that time. Well, even the Ace Science Fiction Specials may have a book that just doesn't agree with you. For me, that was A Torrent of Faces by James Blish and Norman L. Knight, 1967. At first, looking at the blurb and reading a little bit about the book, it sounded like something I would really enjoy. We're looking at world population at 1 trillion in the year 2754. Basically, Earth is a controlled city environment. All resources and consumption are controlled by a worldwide government. The Earth is like a brain with neurons crossing its globe. These neurons are cities that are so close to each other, they're basically one large city. Resources are scarce, and they're looking into interstellar travel. Can they relieve the Earth of some of its population? This overpopulated Earth seems to be a popular trope in the 60s and 70s. Think John Brunner's stand on Zanzibar. When looking back at our time, the people of the 28th century call us the time of waste. We were squandering the resources that we had. Early on, we discover that there is an asteroid heading to Earth. This asteroid, even with any mitigation that they can do, will still be about a mile or a little bit more in diameter. It's headed for the south part of Hudson's Bay. Now, I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's lights out for my city if this happened. In fact, think about the damage that potentially can be caused. All these connected cities, this energy grid, this balance of resources. So as they try to mitigate the damage from the asteroid, they're also looking at how can we move people out of these cities to places that may be safe? And what can we do to minimize the damage caused if it hits? Sounds like it would be intriguing, page turning even. After they introduce the asteroid, you don't hear about it for about another third of the book. You follow a couple on a vacation to a barrier reef where a gigantic city-sized hotel faces a typhoon and sinks into the ocean. They have to rescue people. Thrilling. The Poseidon adventure in a huge hotel. It's boring. And then they look at a genetic manipulation of man that has created basically mer people. And there is a question about whether there can be a hybrid between humans and mer people. There's a romance. Danger is involved, but it's boring. In fact, there is a lot of what I'm just going to call sci-fi splaining going on here. All sorts of world building that really is unnecessary. And then, yeah, we do get back to the asteroid again. It's coming. They can't stop it. They fire lasers at it. They put bombs on it. But it's coming. It hits, and it's bad, but it's not really described very well. In fact, the last 25 pages of the novel or so are about the aftermath, and I don't care. To me, this was a complete miss at connecting with characters, connecting with plot, and connecting with the science. Overpopulation. The threat of an asteroid, the sinking of an enormous hotel, all these plot ideas squandered. Now, 
maybe I'm just completely not connecting with Blish and Knight. I hope this doesn't represent any of their other books. I know Blish wrote novelizations of the Star Trek original series, and I remember reading those and enjoying those. But I have yet to read some other Blish books. I do have some on my shelf. I sure hope that they're better than this one. So I feel like I'm being a very harsh critic on this one, but you have to understand, it's just the way it came across for me. If it hadn't been an Ace Science Fiction special, I doubt I would have even finished it. So I'm giving A Torrent of Faces 3 out of 10. What do you think? Have I missed the boat on this one? This is the 11th book that I've read in the Ace Science Fiction special series 1. I've started the next book. It's actually a return to an author that we saw earlier in the series. James H. Smits wrote The Witches of Cars, and that was a very entertaining novel. So I'm hoping that this will be, let's say, a palate cleanser from reading this last one. The next one is called The Demon Breed, and I've just started it, but it's very interesting. Until next time, keep reading.